Hey, welcome back everyone. Don here again. So I've been on a bit of a hiatus. Uh, I haven't posted anything in a while. It's been busy around here. Busy with work, busy with the new dog. Um, just plain busy. Uh, but here we are back at it. So I added a new machine to my repertoire of lawn care gear and that is this uh, Toro Time Cutter. Um, I had my, my Murray Rider uh, that I had to retire um, 28 years, no, yeah, 28, 1995, I, I bought that. I bought it at the big box store, $1,300, and it served me well. I got a lot of use out of that thing. Engine still ran great, though. It was a Briggs 19 horse, um, but the rest of the mower started coming apart around it. I have the Toro Time Master, and it's not a bad machine, um, but... It's a walk behind, 30 inch walk behind, and I've got nearly 14,000 square feet of lawn and having to mow twice a week with a walk behind on almost 14,000 square feet takes a lot of time. I enjoy doing it, but I don't have the time all the time and, and it ends up getting away from me and then I have to bag the clippings. I decided that uh, it's time to step into this century and get myself a zero turn, um, but I did have a budget in mind. I, I didn't want to just go hog wild and buy, you know, some crazy uh, commercial machine that I didn't really need. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to take care of my gear, so I, I thought that anything I buy is going to last me a long time. So this was what I came up with. Uh, there were compromises made, um, mostly because of budget, right? I mean, I didn't want to just throw... Uh, an absorbent amount of money into a lawnmower, right? I mean, after all, this is just a one-trick pony, right? It cuts grass. That's it. After doing my homework, uh, I really liked the bad boy. Um, the Avenger was uh, my first pick, but having $6,000 tied up into a lawnmower just doesn't seem practical to me, um, especially where I'm just, you know, just a homeowner doing my own grass. So um, I think this machine was a pretty good compromise in that I got a lot of the things that I thought were important. I really wanted a fabricated deck and I got that. This is 10 gauge, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty stout. I like that it's a flat top. I like that it has an anti-scalp wheel in the center. The MyRide system on the Toro was sort of a bonus. Um, I'm not getting any younger and I think this is going to really be a good thing over time for me. You can adjust the softness or the firmness of it. Um, I guess I'll have to play with that a little bit. One of the other things that I had determined I wanted to uh, consider was the Kawasaki engine, and I was able to get that with this machine. There's no hour meter, um, but I did order one on the internet. You know, Toro's hour meter, they wanted 80 or 90 bucks for it, and I got one on the internet for, you know, cheap money, $20, something like that. So I'll install it myself. The cool thing about this machine is that the wiring is already there and it's, it's down in there. It's just a plug and play kind of thing. This deck has this, this is kind of tough plastic. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I may end up banging this thing around. I, if I scrape it up against something, it's gonna crack probably. At least that's uh, what the buzz is. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But it does have uh, the foot pedal for adjustment of the mower height, which is good. So you're not, I'm not relying on this lever to do it all. Um, but one of the things that I noticed was, uh, and, and I, I don't know, maybe this is like this for a lot of mowers, but with the mower deck in the highest position right here, I don't know if you can see that, but that to the floor, from the floor to the cutting height is about three and three quarter inch. And that is um, positioned all the way up, which according to that, it's four and a half inches. And that's not four and a half inches. It's not even four inches. So I don't know if there's some other deck adjustments that need to be uh, taken into account or, or what, but I mean, not that it's that important, and maybe that's pretty common for the height adjustments to not be actual. Maybe that's why on my Time Master, the height adjustments are letters and not actual inch increments, uh, because who knows 
you know, it's easier to say that's level C than it is to say that's three inches, you know. I guess the other thing to consider is maybe the deck's not on there uh, quite right and it's not level. Um, but as you can see, it seems pretty level to me. This machine does have this uh, uh, smart speed, uh, Toro calls it, and you can adjust this to uh, full speed, middle speed, medium speed, which I guess they say that's good for towing, although I don't know that I'll tow anything, but nonetheless. Um, and then a slow speed, and I guess that might come in handy for me, especially where I'm a new user for uh, zero turn. I may uh, end up using that a little bit. So I like that this has armrests, again, with the MyRide system. That's going to uh, uh, be a good thing for me over time. Um, it's got some pretty beefy casters on it. The wheels are quite wide, so it's pretty stable looking. I haven't uh, driven it yet, as I said, but uh, these, are, uh, these are cast. So if I ever bump anything and, and you know twist something, I don't know. I guess the reason these are bolted on cast is that if you ever hit something or damage one of these, you can just bolt it on. But I can't imagine that if you hit something hard enough with this, that you're gonna tweak the frame anyway. But I guess if there's a bearing issue, it's nice to be able to just take this whole thing out and replace it. It's got a basic fuel gauge. Um, you look in the window and you supposedly can see the fuel and the, you know, the fuel level through that. This thing's not protecting the engine enough. I would prefer if this were a little taller so it would protect the top uh, section of the engine. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, I'll just have to be careful with that. One of the things that I don't particularly like about this is the automatic electric brake. And the key has to be on. You have to have battery power in order for it to work, right? So when the handle's out like this, the brake's on. And when you put the handle up, like you're about to drive off, you can hear it, it shuts the brake off. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't, uh, I don't particularly care for that. It's just another system, another thing to break, right? Something that's um, not necessarily gonna need maintenance, but eventually that thing's gonna fail and I'm gonna have to deal with that. Uh, I would much rather have a lever that is uh, controlled by me. And maybe, you know, it's a simple cable that uh, will eventually wear out too, I would suppose, but I'd have to just replace the cable and it would be not, you know, no big deal. Um, but I think the mechanism that um, controls the electric brake is probably going to be more costly than just a simple cable. Um, the other thing about that is if I ever need to push this machine, I won't be able to unlock the brake without there being electrical power, right? So think about that. If I leave this in my shed all winter and the battery goes dead, I'm going to have to service it in the confines of my shed. Now, maybe there's a way I can get underneath it and manually uh, disengage that brake, but I, I don't I don't really care for that. I would rather have just had a hand lever, but that's just my personal preference. So I did order a bagger with this machine. One of the things that they cautioned me on was with the bagger, I'm more likely to get debris in my air cleaner and I'll need to watch for that. Be careful, make sure my air cleaner stays uh, free of, uh, of obstruction and grass clippings and all that stuff. So I'll have to watch for that once I get the bagger and I get it mounted.
So how fitting, I was just listening to Foreigner. Feels like the first time. Well, I could tell you, uh, the comfort of the MyRide suspension system is unbeatable. Um, I'm glad I ponied up for the little bit extra that it was. Uh, the quality of cut looks good, although my lawn needs uh, some water. And I guess this is a step in the right direction in terms of modern lawn mowing. Coming from my 28-year-old garden tractor, this thing is uh, is a rocket ship. It uh, it really is. Now I still <laughs> I still have some uh, I still have some practicing uh, to do to uh, get the controls down. I still find myself turning the wrong way inadvertently, but I'll get that. That'll come with time. Uh, it didn't take long to get the gist of it, though. You know, the only other thing I, I think about is uh, when I was a, when I was younger doing small engine repair, we always were taught to tip a mower with the carburetor up and the uh, crankcase down, if possible, so all the oil doesn't go up into the head. And every zero turn that I've seen in the process of shopping uh, has the the, the cylinder heads facing backwards so when you lift the front of the mower to uh, sharpen the blades or get to the deck any oil in the engine runs towards the heads I don't know if that's still a thing of course when I was coming up uh, in uh, taking care of small engines overhead valves was not a thing uh, they were in the in the uh, block of the engine and they uh, and the head was just a simple cap, you know. Um, so I don't know if it matters less now because overhead valves. Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe uh, I should probably look into that. But either way, um, yeah, I don't regret it so far. I mean, let's see how the longevity goes. Like I said, there were some things on this machine that were more of a compromise because I didn't want the complicated extras, you know what I mean? That's what made me think about the bad boy first because the bad boy is simply made robust and strong a lot of the components are the same the transmissions are the same you know class to class when you get up into a commercial mower they change uh, dramatically but the cost goes up as well so uh, having um, you know uh, 2200 uh, transmissions uh, those are the same transmissions that are on other comparable models regardless of manufacture uh, same thing with the engines, although I think Toro does make an engine that uh, is their own, but I, I, you know, I don't have that in this case. I've got a Kawasaki, so. Anyway, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time.